times and easy times had long followed in turn and been taken as matters of course. But recent years in the state of Cascado had brought to the jackrabbit a succession of remarkable up and downs. In the old days, they had their endless fight with birds and beasts of prey, with cold and heat, with pestilence and with flies, whose sting bred a loathsome disease, and yet had held their own. But the settling of the country by farmers made many changes. Dogs and guns arriving in numbers reduced the rank of coyotes, foxes, wolves, badgers and hawks. They preyed on the jack, so that in a few years the rabbits were multiplied in great swamps. But now pestilence broke out and swept them away. Only the strongest, the double season, remained. For a while, a jack rabbit was a rarity. But during this time, another change came in. The Osage, Orange Hatch planted everywhere, afforded a new refuge. And now, the safety of a jackrabbit was less often his speed than his wits, and the wise ones, when pursued by a dog or coyote, would rush to the nearest hatch through a small hole and escape, while the enemy sought for a larger one by which to follow. The coyotes rose to this and developed this trick of the relief chase. In this one coyote takes one few, another the next. And if the rabbit attempts to the hedge rules, they work from each side and usually win their prey. The rabbit remedy for this is keen to see the second coyote. Avoidance of that few. Then good legs to distance the first enemy. Thus the jack rabbits after being successfully numerous scarce in mirrors and rare were now again on the increase and those which survived selected by a hundred hard trails were enabled to flourish we are where their ancestors could not have outlived a single season. Their favourite grounds were not the broad open stretches or of the big ranches but the complicated much fenced view on of the farm where this was so small and close as to be like a big straggling village. One of these vegetable villages had sprung up around the railway station of New Jersey. The country a mile away was well supplied with jackrabbits of the new and selected stock. Among them was a little lady rabbit called Bright Eyes. From her leading characteristic as she sat grey in the grey bushes, in the grey brush. She was a good runner, but was especially successful with the fence play that baffled the coyotes. She made her nest out in the open pasture an untouched track of the Asian prairie. Here her brood were born and raised. One like herself was bright eyed, in coat of silver grey and partly gifted with her ready roots. But in the other, there appeared a rare combination of his mother's gift. With the best that was in the best strain of the new jackrabbit of the plains. This was the ones whose adventures were we have been following, the one that later on the turf won the name of Little War Horse and that afterwards achieved a worldwide fame. Ancient tricks of his kind he revived and put to new uses. 
the ancient enemies he learned to fight with newfound tricks. When a mere baby, he discovered a plan that was worthy of the wisest rabbit in Cascado. He was pursued by a horrible little yellow dog, and he had tried in vain to get rid of him by dodging among the fields and farms. This is a good play against a coyote, because the farmers and the dogs were often helped the jack without knowing it by attacking the coyote. But now the plan did not work at all, for the little dog managed to keep after him for the little dog managed to keep after him through a one fence after another, and Jack Warhorse, not yet full grown, much less seasoned was beginning to feel the strain. His ears were no longer up straight, but angling back at, at times, drooping to a level as he darted through a very little hole in an Osage hedge, only to find that his nimble enemy had done the same without loss of time. In the middle of the field was a small herd of cattle, and with them a calf. There is in wild animal a curious impulse to trust any stranger when in desperate streets. The foe behind the no means death. There is just a chance and the only one left. That the stranger may prove friendly and it was this little desperate chance that drew Jack Warhorse to the cows. It's quite sure that the cows would have stood by in stolid indifference so far as the rabbit was concerned. But they have a deep rooted hatred for a dog. And when they saw the yellow cur coming bounding towards them, the tails and noses went up. They sniffed out angrily. They closed up ranks and led by the cow that owned the half, the calf. They charged at the dog, while Jack took refuge under a low thorn bush. The dog swerved aside to attack the calf, at least the old count thought he did, and she followed him so fiercely that he barely escaped from the field with his life. It was a good old plan, one that darkness came from the days when buffalo and coyote played the parts of cows and dog. Jack never forget it, and more than once it saved his life. In colour as well as in power, he was a rarity. Animals are coloured in one or an other of Two general plans, one that matches them with their surrounding and helps them to hide. This is called protective. The other that makes them very visible for several purposes. This is called directive. Jack rabbits are particular, peculiar in being painted both ways, as they squat in their former as they squat in their form, in the grey brush and clothes or clots. They are soft grey on their ears, head, back and sides. They match the ground and cannot be seen until close at hand. They are protective coloured. They are protectively coloured. But the moment it is clear to the jack that the approaching foe will find him. He jumps up and dash away. He throws off all the guys disguise now. The grey seems to disappear. He makes a lighting cha change. 
and his ears show snowy white with black, black tips. The legs are white, his tail is a black spot in a blaze of white. He's black and white rabbit now. His colouring is all directive. How is it done? Very simply. The front of the ear is grey, the back black and white. The black tail with its hand white hello and the leg are tucked below. He's sitting on them. The grey mantle is pulled down and enlarged as he sits. But when he jumps up, it shrinks somewhat. All his black and white marks are now shown, and just as his colours firmly whispered, I am a clot. He now shouted aloud, I am a jack rabbit. Why should he do this? Why should a timid creature running from for his life thus proclaim the to all the world his name is fit. There must be some good reason. It must pay. Or the rabbit would never have done it. The answer is if the creature that scared him up was one of his own kind. An example this was a false alarm. Then at once by showing his national colours, the mistake is made right. On the other hand, if it be a coyote, fox, or dog, they see at once this is a jackrabbit and know that it would be a waste of time for them to pursue him. They say, in effect, this is a jackrabbit. And I cannot catch a jack in an open race. They give it up and that, of course, save that jack a great deal of unnecessary running and worry. The black and white spots are the national uniform and flag of the jacks. In poor specimens, they are apt to be dull. But in the finer species specimens, they are not only larger but brighter than usual. And the little war horse, grey when he sat in his form, blazed like a charcoal in snow. When he flung his defiance to the fox and buff coyote and danced with little effort before them. First a black and white jack, then a little white spot, and last a speck of this silk down before the distant swallowed him. Many farmers' dogs had learned the lesson. A greyish rabbit you may catch, but a very black and white one is hopeless. They might indeed follow for a time, but there was merely for fun of a chibi. And his growing power often led Warhorse to seek the chase for the sake of a little excitement. And to the hazards that others less gifted were most careful to avoid. Jack, like all other wild animals, had a certain range of country which was at home to him and outside of this rally stray it was about three miles across extending easterly from the center of the village scattered through these he had a number of farms or bits as they are called locally these were mere hollows situated under a sheltering bush or bunch of grass, without lining excepting the accidental grass and inblown leaves. But comfort was not forgotten. Some of them were for hot weather. They faced the north, were scarcely sunk, were scarcely sunk, 
were little more than shady places. Some for the cold weather were deep hollows with sudden exposure, and others for the wet were well roofed with herbage and faced the west. In one or other of these, he spent the day, and at night he went forth to feed with his kind, spotting and romping on moonlight. Nice, like a lot of puppy dogs, but careful to be gone by sunrise, and safely tucked in a bed that was suited to the weather. The safest ground for the jacks was among the farms, where not only Osage hedges, but also the newly arrived barbed wire laid hurdles and hazards in path of possible enemies, but the finest of the forage is nearer to the village among the truck farms. The finest of forage and the fiercest of dangers. Some of the dangers of the plains were lacking, but the greater perils of men's gun stocks and impassable fences are much increased. Yet those who knew Warhol's best were not all surprised to find that he had made a farm in the middle of the market gardener melon patch. The scores of danger beset him here, but there was also a score of unusual delights and a score of holes in fence for times where he had to fly with at least two score of expedients to help him afterward.